Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Art and I will be your host today. So my role at Arcdesk is to help businesses identify profit gaps and remove complexity with the use of technology that brings communication, control and collaboration to every project. So in today's webinar, we'll focus on how property developers can digitize with Arcdesk, allowing them to resolve issues evolve collaboration and ultimately build stronger digital environments to aid project performance. So moving into today's agenda, we will start by looking into the market's insight and some key statistics. We'll then discuss some key industry trends and go over how the industry is evolving to change. We'll then move on to discuss the main pain points that get highlighted when discussing project management and look into how digital management solutions can help. We will then also provide a high level overview of some key areas Arcdesk provides with a short demonstration. So moving into it, let's move into some key industry data. So we all know that the developer sector of construction has been one that's highlighted for shortcomings. Now with rising material costs, not to mention staff shortages, coupled with a skill shortage, the future may look rather daunting. Now McKinsey and company reported that 98% of projects incur cost overruns or delays. The average cost increases 80% of the original cost. And when it comes to delays, they reported slippage on projects is estimated at 20 months. Now, the same study suggests that 77% of these projects are 40% late. But the ONS reported in September, within its publication, that new housing was the strongest performer to September 2021, aiding the recovery from Let's Build Britain. But with, will the house builder sector ever get close to reaching the government's targets of 300,000 homes a year? What can we do to improve output? Is it about adapting to the changing world or understanding the need to digitize? So looking into the housing market in a little bit more detail, especially house builders, let's look at some of the trends we've seen over the last 18 months. Now, there's been several reports that the build to rent market can be the savior to the housing crisis. The standard blockage to the housing targets has always been that has, there has not been enough supply for demand. Now, build to rent has led to rapid growth in the number of planning permissions submitted, with an increase of 52% during the pandemic year. Now, build to rent market needs support of its own. Being a design to build, but also a building operator at the same time, brings challenges around areas of cooperation, collaboration, and communication during the design stage, the build stage and also the handover stage, not to mention being able to manage a property when this has been completed and tenants have moved in. So some other areas where we've seen growth within the housing market is MMC, or modern methods of construction. Now, if you missed it, in last month's webinar, we discussed modular construction. That's online and you can watch it again if you go onto our website. So how can MMC help the housing shortage? Well, modern methods of construction can save time. Now, some developers have already started to use this on site, and one large developer has around about 10% of its output in off site factories. Now, to support this further, there's been an increase of 175% in planning application, specifying MMC as a building choice. So, is the industry ready to adopt MMC without being able to monitor programs and keep collaboration central in a factory? on site and in the office that's one big question we would love to answer today now another big shake-up in the developer industry will be the introduction of the building safety bill with legislative duty holders required not just in the design phases but throughout a project how can developers keep on track with projects and make sure delays transferring information doesn't happen the important element to note is the golden thread of information it's going to become more apparent as we move through into um, later development plans as the years go on. So trends in an industry is great to look over. It's how we can address the current situation. But what other challenges are we facing? So one thing that we looked at was a shortage of land, especially further out into the suburb. 
that means more feasibility at the start of a project and it becomes more crucial. Monitoring the land appraisals with designers and architects even before planning can add significant costs even before having planning granted. With the cost of materials and ultimately the cost of living increasing, for the many, the economy is one that's most unpredictable. And these trends developers can monitor. Further, with the new residential property developer tax, which is mainly for the removal of unsafe cladding, it's also set to hamper the industry. Now, lack of being able to monitor material specification remains a huge issue on many projects. Now, the materials have become more and more of an issue. The Department for Business, Energy and Industrial St Strategy reported the average material cost across the construction sector were 23.5% higher than they were in August 2020. So moving on, from what we've discussed, how does this impact project teams and what are their challenges? We've highlighted a selection of problems a project team can face on a daily basis, and I'll go over these in a moment. We'll look into risk management, what causes lack of structure, poor communication, unreal ex expectations, and how to monitor delayed cash flow while staying on top of limited skills. So that brings me on to Arcdesk. Now, Arcdesk supports you to manage your businesses and projects from the proposal to handover stage in a single platform, allowing each business to resolve issues, evolve business communication, and help to build better projects, creating better communities. So why is digital important? 53% of development executives reported in a study are considering or planning to use digital transformation strategies to mitigate business risk. And 56% are considering or planning to use data analytics to mitigate business challenges. So how can Optus help? Now, poor communication is one of the biggest impactors to any project or industry, and, that, and that's leading to poor communication. With new legislations and contract warranties to track on handover, communication needs to be centric in any development project. Now, according to the Project Management Institute, the lack of communication leads to project failures over 30% of the time. That limits skills, creates unrealistic realistic expectations, and hinders the projects. So risk management. Managing any type of risk in a project is about being able to take a collective look over different sets of data in a project and being able to report and resolve any issues. Now with siloed application, mitigating any risk from one platform to another is difficult. Now you're probably asking why. Understanding communication and collaboration across multiple platforms and collect, collecting different data sets, be it commercial or assessing productivity, is all about getting data central. For develop, developers, this is crucial on reporting any element of a project provides. That provides us with the ability to make quicker decisions. Now, cash flows and finances. We've spoken about delays a lot. And one area that can cause the most delays is delays to cash flows. Now, how many times have you found yourself chasing payments or even searching for a PO, submitting a tender, and then confirming deliveries on orders? Finance is the key area for any project. And with developers monitoring the different materials being ordered against budgets, it's crucial to keep a project alive and most importantly, profitable. With Arcdesk, we build our platform with building blocks. That allows us to make each install significant for every single customer we work with. We have a tailored approach to every organization, understanding your core areas of concerns across projects and business deliveries, and being able to attach ourselves and attach the solution to the correct areas that need to be looked into. That's why we like to take a Lego brick approach. It allows us to install efficiencies across the business and across departments, allowing you to collaborate with your teams in a central area, communicate with everyone that's involved in a project, and more efficiently control projects that you're working on with key in, key data sets, being able to kind of get, get read. And with Arcdesk, 
it's easy for us to turn certain areas off if you're not ready to dive into them just yet. That's what really gives us the ability to have a platform that is scalable for every single business that we work with. So I know what you're asking. Let's jump into Arcdesk and have a look at the actual application itself. So let me just navigate across into a Arcdesk that I prepared earlier. Now, this is for a particular um, organization that we've created in our demo environment. Now, first things first, Arcdesk is a complete cloud application that allows you to be able to access Arcdesk where, wherever you have a internet connection. It also allows you to access Arcdesk through our dedicated applications that are available on Android and Apple devices, allowing you not only to manage and control projects within the office, using our platform but also whilst you're out on site and it also gives teams out on site the ability to stay in touch with what's happening with information exchanges now with arcdesk we created a no code platform that means it's easy to create any types of dashboards that are important to yourselves and as we go further into the demonstration today i'll show you some other areas where that really uh, provides a massive benefit to our customers so one of the things we discussed in the um, in the webinar today was the ability to track different data sets and different trends of what's happening on a project. As you can see here, we've got a couple of projects that are in the project design phases. This is where we're looking into feasibility studies of land um, and moving into the next stages of being able to decide if a piece of land is going to be the most ideal for us to go and build on. So we can track a number of areas here. You can see on this particular dashboard, we have our project values against our project capexes. And this really gives our overview on in terms of where our investments are on different projects. So on this particular environment, we've got a couple of projects that we're working on, um, and this shows our investment values. If you scroll down, you can see that we have information and we can see exactly which projects are underway and where they are in their stages. Now, all of these dashboards can be created for you in terms of what information you want to see within um, your project teams or as a business. So one thing we also can create is centric information to particular projects that we're working on. So on this particular example, we have a project that we call the Golden Terraces. We can highlight and see what our budget is on that project, what our committed cost is and what our profits are. Now you can see we're quite still in some early stages of this particular project. But you can also see the different properties that are involved in this project that we're working on. And you can see that they're all new build um, and the different stages they're in. You can see some of these are in tenant fit outs uh, and some are still in procurement gathering stages, as you can tell. And all of these dashboards can be built up to any, to what information you want to see. So if you're a site engineer working out on site and you want to have a look at all the different forms or different tasks you've got assigned to yourself, you can have a look at those through dashboards at the same time. Now, one dashboard that we find really important and a lot of our customers like is our financials dashboard. And what this dashboard allows us to do is have a look at all the information that's centric to this particular job, or, um, sorry, particular to every single project we're working on. So I just zoomed into it a little bit more there to show you a better view. But we can see what our gross profit are on completed projects right through to where invoices are and where we need to be performing. So it really gives us the ability to track the different data trends and get all of the data across from all of our projects and utilize it into different dashboards that we want to look at. Now, like I mentioned, we're a no code platform. That means you can create different types of dashboards. And it also means you can create different types of dashboards for yourself and also share these with the teams that you're working with. So you might see some people within the finance area might have certain dashboards that they're using and they have the ability to share those with project managers so that they can get information um, all the time. Now within Arcdesk, we'll move into a project shortly, but just to give you an idea, we structure our system into a unique way, where on, across the top, we have different areas that we can dive into. And then as you'll see, we'll have a sub menu for each one of these areas. So what we'll do now, and as time is ticking, we'll jump into one of our projects to give you an idea of how we can look into a project and be able to efficiently track it. So as I jump into this project, the first information stream that I'm um, pushed into is our details page. And we can have a look at any details that we need to look onto a particular project. So it could be the project scope, it could be project design information, or it could be people that are involved in this project that we need to get an answer from. 
Now, what we can also get an idea of is what process of work this particular project's in. Now, Arcdesk really controls its workflows, and we have unique workflow management processes within the actual application. Again, you can customize workflows to your business and how your business works, or even to how projects need to work. So as we move into the golden thread and where duty holders become more important in terms of signing off certain stages of works, we can build these into the workflow so that we can manage the information that's being sent and what's being approved at the same time. Now you can see we're in a couple of these stages and we've been able to skip some stages. Our workflows can be linear and non-linear, meaning we can jump ahead or even have set protocols to say that we can't jump ahead of certain processes. So if we just jump into a particular um, stage of works to give you an idea, you can see how easy it is to add tasks to people and also add attachments. And that information gets passed on to everyone that's involved. So within Arcdesk, we have a really comprehensive financial module. So as you all know, the first thing that we need to always look into is the budgets. So what we'll do is we'll just dive into this particular budget, which is for building B, um, and it's got an estimated uh, budget value. So if I drop that down, you can see that that budget's been separated into different areas that we need to look into, from site works to HVAC to the services that need to be installed. And each one of these areas, we've been able to build up within Arcdesk and build up a relative budget that's going to be assigned onto that particular works. This really helps all of our developers in the land appraisal format or land appraisal stages when they go through um, the planning stages to make sure that a particular piece of land is going to be viable for the project and also allow us to put together a budget for when that goes into approval um, and then gets passed on with granted permission and then into granted works. So what happens from here? What we can then do is move into our quotations area. And when we move into our quotations area, what we're able to do is start building up a quote and we can build up that quote. And what it allows us to do is build up the quotation against our budget. So what we might have received from here is maybe a bill of materials, a bill of quantities from our architects, uh, quantities, players or designers. And what we're able to start doing is building up the particular quotation and assigning the budget elements against it. So on this one, which is a basic example that we have loaded up here, we can see our building areas and we can see that it's associated to the engineering budget. That allows us to track that information straight from the budget to the actual what we're going to um, go into the into the building stages. Now, generally, what you'd be able to move into is tenders going on from here. And with Arcdesk, we have the ability to manage different types of tenders that are running through the system. So if we just scroll down to the bottom for one that I provide that I built earlier, we have this particular um, tender that we run. You can see we have three participants, two of the participants lost and one of the participants won the tender. What I'm able to do is view the offers of the tender that was submitted and I can dive into it and to see what the scoring matrix is. Now, to create a tender, it's very easy. All we have to do is provide all the information that we need to go into the first stages. So what we do is from our quotation, if we're happy with it and we want to move into the next stage, we will go and create a tender. So we go into our tenders area and we will click on create a tender. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tender for the building areas. 
And what I need to do from there on is start adding participants. So what I can do, and with an arc desk, we have a contact area. That contact area allows you to store all of your business contacts, whether they're architects, subcontractors, suppliers, you name it, you can add them into the contacts. When we're within a project, we can add con relevant contacts to that project. That then allows us to add specific tenderies that we're going to send information out to for, uh, for this particular work. So what I'll do is I'm just going to choose a couple of um, random subcontracts that we built into the system. Um, let's add a, another participant as well. And again, I'm just selecting any random ones, so just selecting names that look nice for me for, for some reason today. Um, and we'll just leave it at those two. So before we move on to the next stage, what we're going to need to do is add an evaluation criteria. So we can either import from predefined criteria that we've used on previous tenders, or we can create new criteria. So on this one, we'll select some ones that we've used before. So the first one, lowest price. I want to make sure that I'm getting the lowest price on this tender. So I'm going to add that one into, uh, into the evaluation criteria. Let's add another one, and we'll create a new one on this time. And we're going to say lead times is going to be one that is going to be important to us. So we want lead times. Um, let's say lead times complete to a set projects. The import is going to set us to other, and we're going to select the scoring width to manual, and the lowest is going to give us 10 points. So we'll save that, and that's, um, that's that one that we've put in. And then let's just add a new one, and we'll use a predefined one, and let's say warranty. So let's put the warranty one, the bigger the better on warranty so we'll save that which is always going to be important for us and we can set that as our criteria now if i needed to any files that i need to attach for this particular tender i can store here what that then allows us to do is when we submit this tender we go through the approval process and that approval process will send the information out to the tenderees and and the participants and it will also send them out the tender pack when they complete the tender and send that back to us, we can import it into Arcdesk, and Arcdesk will allow us to pick the most beneficial tendery out of the platform. So once a tender has been selected, a number of other processes that you can monitor through Arcdesk is the ability to issue purchase orders, raise purchase invoices, and monitor any supplier invoices that they're sending into um, us through Arcdesk. Now, with the ability to do that, we can track the costs as the project goes ahead. And we've also got the ability to connect into accounting applications. So we have integrations into Xero and QuickBooks, and we can also support other integrations into other accounting software that you might be using. Now, once we're monitoring all the financials on a project, we have a financial dashboard in every single project that we run. And that gives us all the information against this particular project that we're running. So you can see on this one, I'm in a little bit of trouble because I've exceeded my current contract budget. So you can tell my investors aren't gonna be happy with me. But what I can do is start diving into the detail to find out where I might have spent most of my money. So you can see I've spent quite a bit of money in architectural fees, a considerable amount compared to what my budget was and also in materials. What I can do is start looking into the budget breakdown and finding out where I might have spent more money than where I should have. And what this then allows me to do is dive straight into the purchase orders of where these materials um, items have been and I can get the data sets. So we have a nice flow of information straight from the processes to the files you can install, right through to the financial elements on a project so we can make sure project health is monitored correctly. And then we can also monitor where people are working and what projects they're working on.
So what do I mean by projects that people are working on or where people are? In a particular project, we have the ability to create Gantt charts. We also do have integrations uh, with other platforms that are out there, including Microsoft projects, where Gantt charts can be brought into Arcdesk. But what we can do through Arcdesk itself is we can start seeing different tasks. We can see the resources that are within those tasks and also what assets are on a particular task as well. So we're not double booking people or double booking assets. So let's take this one, for example, tile polishing. You can see it's a fun task. But what we have on every single one of our processes is the ability to update a process. We can submit a form as a handover and give it a signature and take that into the next approval stages. But what we're also able to do is track budget elements against um, people on tasks. So we have a really intuitive project uh, program of works that you can work on every single project. Now you're probably thinking, what about when we're working on multiple projects? How do we see where everyone is? So we're just gonna navigate to our schedule app. And what I'm gonna do is just go back a few months to, um, to show you how we can track where different people are on different projects. So let's just go back a couple of months to when we were having a really busy time in July. So what we've got here is all of our um, employees or subcontractors that are working for us. And what we can see is the different projects that they're all working on. This will make, this make sure that we're not double booking anyone, but it also gives us a holistic view of where everyone is and what everyone's working on in terms of a project. And what we can do is just click onto a project and we can get the information quite quickly um, from what that what a particular person and a particular asset is doing. So we can also input tasks and projects straight through the systems. Well. So if I highlight two days for Anika, I can tell Anika she's either got a project task, she might be in a meeting, or I might just need to create something new. What the system will also do is have a look at Anika's diary if there's nothing listed, and tell me if I can actually book her into a particular project task at a meeting or a time off on holiday. So that gives you a quick idea in terms of Arcdesk and how we can manage people's times and how we can manage projects and also how we can create efficiencies against the data that we're collecting. So just in terms of time today, that wraps up today's webinar. I'm just going to have a quick look at some of the questions that might be coming in. Um, we've got a couple of questions that need answering. So one of the questions is the implementation process and configuration of the platform. So Arcdesk has a very unique implementation and configuration of the platform. Now Arcdesk isn't a off-the-shelf product. What that basically means is we create every single Arcdesk install for each one of our clients that we work with. That really lets us get ingrained into your business and allows us to share best practices, but also to understand the different processes that you're going to be working on a project. Therefore, our implementation is very thorough. And when we go through our implementation process, our implementation consultants are on hand to not only help you build the platform, but to get to you to a stage where you're going to be self-sufficient in creating workflows, dashboards, forms, quotations through the platform yourself at any time. We also provide in-depth training as well. And we also have online training modules that you can quickly get access to and access information uh, very fastly as well. So another question um, that has been asked is how customizable are the workflows? So in a world where we're working, where workflows are very, very uh, sought after in terms of the need for them, our workflows are very unique and they're very customizable in a sense that workflows are configured to what you need to see. So as you see in, saw in today's demonstration, we had a couple of very basic workflows that we set up. Now, each workflow can be assigned for different tasks to different people. When we move into another workflow, they will get notifications of tasks um, straight through to them. And every single workflow that we build is customized to your platform. So that pretty much wraps up the questions. Um, what I will say, if you do have any further questions, please do get in touch. We're also exhibiting at Digital Construction Week, so please do feel free to visit our, um, our stand, uh, which is on November the 24th and 25th. I would like to thank you all for your time today. 
and um, please do get in touch so we can share a more bespoke demonstration for you all. Many thanks. Bye.